hello again and welcome back to another episode of the Joker Bros. I'm your host, Sam Snight Prime. I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And we'd like to thank our sponsor, Cards of Evilies. Uh, check them out, cardsofevilies.com. They have everything you need from singles, uh, sleeves, all kinds, all kinds of gear that you need to, to get ready. I know that I need to order a at least 10 or 11 foils that I do not have before Nationals. Um, so, James, be on the lookout for my order. Um, yeah, so and I, I even think that they might have just had a sale that is ongoing. So check them out. Uh, I will try to get the, the description and the details. If not, it's really not hard that hard to find. Uh, just look up Cards of Evilies. Um, anyway, so before we get started... Uh, <laughs> I do want to apologize for the lack of content from us. Um, yeah, yeah, Zach's been lazy and, and Cody's lazy. Yeah, so that, that's, uh-huh. that's, yeah the, that's our excuse. No, but really, uh, we're glad to be back. We're super, we're super excited. We have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to. Um, we're coming back with, with with a lot of information that because we've been gone for three weeks. So we're going to talk about Gen Con. We know we have some hard feelings about Gen Con. We have some good things about Gen Con. Uh, we're going to probably. It's not even on the schedule, I don't think, but we're going to probably talk about Nationals. Uh, probably some hard feelings about Nationals, some good things about Nationals. We're going to try to keep it 100% real because we are the <laughs> the organic podcast, I believe, Zach <laughs> called it one time. So we're going to try to keep it as real as possible uh, and still try and, and, and stay as positive as we can because we are really excited about Final Fantasy um, and and where it's going and where it came, came from. Um, not just not just on the the level of like oh we like Final Fantasy but the actual game itself the mechanics are really exciting um, and, and so I just want to continue to see the game grow. There's a reason as grinders we're not playing Magic anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. absolutely that is absolutely true. That's a good point. And that that is a whole other podcast that we should probably talk about at some point. I know Cody never played Magic, right? Uh, you can take a video game perspective though. Yeah, My, but we I'll could go on and on about movie. the reasons we're not playing Magic any longer. Um, <laughs> anyway, but let's get started. Awesome, yeah. So we're just gonna jump right into Gen Con. We're a little, a couple weeks late on this, but you know, important enough to cover. So Cody, you attended Gen Con. Uh, we were yeah. unable to. Uh, in general, how was your experience at the event? Uh, it was incredible. It was probably one of the best, like, small vacations I've ever been on, and one of my best card game experiences ever. Awesome, awesome. Now you played in both the sealed and which day of the uh, constructed? I played in day two of the constructed event. Day two, okay. What made you decide to play in day two versus day one? To avoid Andy Carmona and Matthew Okimoto. <laughs> I mean, hey, there you go. Now, how'd you know? Wait, no, no. did they publicly say uh, they were on the... I was actually, I was kind of concerned that it wouldn't fire. So I was like, I want to make sure that we fire both days. I didn't know what if there would be any issue if there was too low of number of people. So Gotcha, okay. Well, I did so... not fire at eight people, to be fair, but... Well, on Gen Con's website, it said it needed 32, and when I signed up, I think I was like 31 or so. So. Oh, snap. For each day, and then was, Yeah, on, on oh, like wow. their little official website. And then uh, Chris Adams also reached out and said he wanted to do the interviews, uh, but we ended up actually just grinding out a ton of games. <laughs> How'd that work there out for you? you? Uh, well, we tested his deck a lot, not mine. I tested like 12 <laughs> different decks against him, so... <laughs> But uh, he ended up top 16, so that was cool. That is cool, yeah. So uh, how did you feel about the sealed? So uh, typically when we see these Crystal Cups, they're all constructed. We haven't had like very large-scale sealed events yet. This was kind of the first. Uh, how do you feel it went? Uh, I was terrified going into it. Uh, <laughs> but then I ended up doing, okay, I got I went 5-2 and two with uh, like an Earth, Fire, and Wind build. Uh, okay. I played 48 cards because I was a little worried about Paul. And most people were shocked about that, but every time Paul came down, I knew I could take like a swing or two and not have to worry about it. I'll go on the record and say that I think that's absolutely terrible. Don't do that next time. <laughs> absolutely well, terrible. Well, there's, the a, there's, a, there's enough removal in Opus Six Limited that you can just kill Paul. Like I, I really believe that. Cody, yeah, don't most do that. Of time, <laughs> most of the time, I didn't have an issue with him because I had Monk. Yeah, because you have uh, removal. Uh, but I had a pl- I had tons of like searching out of those forty eight cards, so it was it's pretty very consistent. Uh, right. Imagine if you had forty cards, you might, you might have top you might have top eighted. Ooh. Uh, hey, but yeah. speaking of that, let's let's talk about you. But you did top sixteen. Yeah, but they but didn't, you they didn't, didn't get it. You didn't get to play out top sixteen. So what happened? Tell me about your uh, perspective took, on that. They only took top eight, which uh, I think is. I think it's fine. Uh, I think 
moving forward, I think all Crystal Cups should be the same, like top yeah, 16 all the way across the board. Yeah. Uh, but this was kind of it's it's like a one off thing, like Zach said. This was like the first big sealed event, so I understand why it was an outlier, right? Or at least make so. it uh, some kind of consistent structure where based on attendance. Uh, that will decide how the cut goes. Because if you only have like 15 people and you play all your Swiss, you don't want all of them to, you know, sure. everybody to top. Of course. But, uh, some right. kind of scaling system would be preferred in the future, I think. Well, that could be said about a lot of things as far as scaling system goes. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so beyond just like the tournament itself, how are like community, meeting everybody? Uh, that was definitely the highlight of the weekend. Uh, I got to have dinner with like, Chris Adams and Adam Lane from the RVA guys, and mm -hmm. then uh, Jonathan and Andy uh, from like Triple Triad one night, and then got to hang out at Okimoto's and Patrick's Airbnb with Max, and I mean everybody, and just was that the out. picture that was on Facebook that was going around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, right before I left, I had lunch with like Greg Cole, Matthew Rice, uh, Justin Jacoby. So I mean, we got to I got to hang out with everybody pretty much. It was kind of it kind of sucked having such little time, <laughs> right? And like so many people you wanted to hang out with like individually and stuff. But that's uh, one of the reasons like that Facebook like the meetup. the Magic Cruise is such a cool idea. If you guys ever heard of the Magic Cruise, like it's a it's a cruise that all the Magic players go on together, and they have like giant tournaments on it, and um, you also get to hang out with all your friends. That Does you that exist? Always... Yes. Really? Yes, when does absolutely. that happen? Where is it? Like, what's? I don't remember, but I know LSV's posted about it and gone on a few, and I've always seen it and been like, "Oh, that's really cool." I know Chapin went on one. Um, it would be cool to kind of see all the Final Fantasy players be like, "Hey, guys, we're all gonna go on a cruise and we're gonna nerd out and play Final Fantasy," or like maybe next year before Nationals, instead of like testing, we'll just go on a cruise and just you know <laughs> bring some cards and test or whatever, relax, you know. We get to see Josh go in his bathrobe by the poolside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he's going to fly to the States to go on a cruise. But... Oh, is it just the States? It wasn't like a international I, thing? I mean, I'm sure it's an international thing. I'm sure international, but, you know, it's yeah. it's a lot more expensive to fly to the States and then go on a cruise. Cruises are already okay. expensive, right? I didn't know if it was like kind of an invite. So, like, across all right, Cody, but I'm not going to let you get away with it that easy because you were very persistent on talking about Gen Con. No, we have to talk about it. We have to talk about it. People need to know. They must know. I am the white knight. I'm the black knight, Cody. <laughs> they must know what is going on. All right, Cody. What? Come on. What, what happened to, in Gen Con? They have to know about my two and four lightning deck. <laughs> it was garbage. <laughs> yeah, I told you not to play that deck. It was great. It actually was very good. Except I just I don't draw Al Cid. I I I don't believe that people should play lightning. I don't. Did you see the uh, statistics that went up today? The Excel sheet where the guy had the breakdowns of all the top decks, uh, and it showed like Ice and Lightning were like the top two. Yeah. Not. I'm not saying you know. No, 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 no. I have no doubt that that lightning uh, can prey upon other decks. Um, mm -hmm. I just think that you put you you position yourself. I've never, and I've played a lot of lightning to like test with people. I've never not known what to do with lightning, or when mm -hmm. playing against lightning, not known what they're gonna do. The deck is very linear, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion. Um, I've never been. It's not to say I haven't lost the Lightning. I lost in Boston the Lightning. In fact, the only games I lost were the Lightning. <laughs> um, oh, no. I actually lost to Okimoto 2 on round 3. Uh, but he was on Ice Earth. But point is, is it's very linear. Um, and you're either winning or you're not. There's not a lot. Now, you could play Lightning if you think it's a great metagame call. So if you think, if you think Nationals is just going to be a bunch of Turbo Ice cheese, then you could play it. Um, if you think people are going to rise above and beat that, then maybe you so you play the middle deck. You know, you don't next level yourself, but <laughs> right. If 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 you're just going into an event uh, with no other statistics, I would say I would not play lightning. I don't. I I told Cody not to play it at Gen Con. <laughs> um, I just think that you know a lot of people think that ice is linear. Um, and Turbo Ice may be a little bit more linear, but like when I'm playing, especially the Ice Mirror Match, the Ice Mirror Match is one of the most fun things there is. It's very strategic. The Ice deck does not play itself, in my opinion. It does limit your opponent's choices. Um, right. But like, I just I've never felt like I don't know what the Lightning player is about to do or what's going to happen. It's almost like you even know when they're going to hit the Odin. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you just know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I definitely I think Zemus adds a little bit, but for the most part, I agree with you. 
Yeah, I do agree with you. Uh, I figured it would be a good meta call because of I've been playing against a lot of Earth Wind, mm -hmm. and I know like a lot of people have been paying attention to like Joshua Freeman Birch's articles where he keeps updating the deck. Uh, unfortunately, and testing against that deck, it was a very easy matchup. Like I played four drop Odin, and really, yeah. So you're playing it, and I and it's gonna it's going to determine. Or it's going to be determined by the quality of your play tanks, your play test partner, and by their deck. I can tell you that the Earth Wind matchup is a buy for the Earth Wind deck if they yes. know what they're doing. Absolutely, the e one That's of the easiest matchups yeah. is that you have <laughs> Cactar, you have Cactar pinging to easily take down a Lua's. You can search wherever you want. You have Shantotos. You have the end game with miners. Dataluma is a pain in the butt. Estola is a pain in the butt. Wall stops the EX burst if you can protect it with Estola. Zidane's have, a pain in the butt. <laughs> Zidane's a huge pain in the butt. Yeah, I, I really think that it's going to depend on the... Uh, so sure, you could put four Odins in your deck and, and claim that you killed Dataluma, but like they have three miners. So yeah, I, I mean, guess they have six. They have six. They have six Datalumas if they're not playing Tama. If right. they're playing Tama, they I can't listen. I'm not a mathematician, but they they have like 17 data lumos or something. I, I can't I can't <laughs> figure out the math the same, if they're having philia. At the same time, we have like Exodus and Odin sure. and six. I played six Adeas. Sure, uh, but you Zemus can't you can't just cast um, an Odin or an Exodus. Like those are expensive cards, right? You can't cast them if you're not if you don't have a board presence. Uh, because you can't just sit there and do nothing against Earth Wind, because it's exactly what it wants you to do, because it's going to build up Cactars and stuff in its hand, play them for free. So you can't just sit there, and so you either have to overpay for those cards, or yes, like an Exodus is very good against, obviously very good against like Dataluma, for example, but like it doesn't, like I feel like the, the Earth Wind deck doesn't care if you spend your turn casting Exodus. To, not to mention that it might just destroy you. It It's way more concerned about the. Alua, and probably mm. only before they had Zidane. Like maybe like Opus Five, Earth Wind was more afraid of Alua, but like Zidane just changes that so drastically, and yeah, it you get sets to double it up, up on Cactors. Like, yeah, it sets it up insane. so you can't you can't idea them because they can attack and get it out of your hand or whatever, you, and then play the Data Luma once it's safe. So, of course, you can exit that if if they're not playing carefully. So I get the mentality of why you played. I'm not trying to like get on you. I'm just trying no, to say no. like I think that your play testing allowed for a bias. Does that make sense? Well, and that, uh, and that wasn't the only deck I played against. I thought it had a good matchup against Turbo Discard. Oh, I think uh, yeah, absolutely it does. Yeah, which I knew was going to be there, and then yeah. I thought it especially had... because they ha they have a lot of two drop backups, right? In mm -hmm. that version, like oh, I don't yeah, know, yeah. your version had scholars, I imagine. Yeah, not enough scholars. I wish I would have played more. Uh, yeah, of but, course, you can you can never have enough scholars. What, going into a Layla uh, Viking meta, right? <laughs> actually, I think Ninja. I played the two drop Ninja that pinged something for two K, which was great against like Yuri Anje and stuff like that. It like surprisingly put in a lot more work than mm -hmm. I expected it to. Uh, mostly in testing, obviously in the tournament, I didn't do so hot. Uh, <laughs> That's right. And, and no, your testing is also a. a a confirmation bias too like just because you didn't win doesn't mean the deck wasn't good oh, that's right. not a, yeah exactly. i mean like you, is, you might have made a great fall into. yeah you might have you might have made a great metagame call which is maybe the reason you played lightning i just think that if you thought there's a bunch of earth wind then the lightning was a very scary pick well i i don't like the tempo ice matchup obviously i had to play against both of you guys at the last crystal cup um but nowadays i feel like i'm i'm so used to playing against it uh, you mean I, on mono ice? On yeah, on like tempo ice. Yeah. Uh, but tempo ice. I don't know. I didn't feel I had the like exact list that I wanted at that time, and the lightning list I think is hands down like the list I would play no matter what. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, did, I did miss Hildebrand a little bit just for like early pressure, uh, but Hildebrand, yeah, Hildebrand. Hmm. I, I I'm not like a super. I'm not super high in the card. Uh, but just I, right I, now, because of so many ping effects and damage effects Dataluma, are so yeah. prevalent, like it, right. you, they can deal with them pretty quickly. Right. It is interesting when you're building a deck <clears> that you have to worry about cards like that. Like you have to, like you need to worry about like can you beat these? In my opinion, the three cards you need or f four cards. I think there's four cards you need to be able to beat. Thaumaturge is number one. Can your deck beat a Thaumaturge? <laughs> okay. Second most important thing: can your deck beat Dataluma? 
Um, if it can't beat Dataluma, I think that's definitely a problem. Um, can your deck beat Paul? Because yep. not a lot of people are playing Paul, but you don't want to get cheap. Someone goes turn one Paul, and you're playing like... Uh, actually, actually, there's several decks I can think of that just actually can't deal with Paul very well. If you're playing a lot of the decks that just don't deal with Paul very well, you could find yourself in trouble. Earth Wind sometimes can't deal with Paul very well unless it's already set up. It has to have a Masked Woman, for example. And finally, I think a Lua is probably mm -hmm. a card that you need to be able to beat. And that is the reason I would play, I would lean towards Lightning. I would um, actually yeah. add a fifth card to that. Is that um, Camelot? Zidane. Oh, okay. The new Zidane. Because like, I was playing a deck uh, and testing in Locals recently, and I didn't have enough summons in my deck, and I just couldn't ever yeah, remove I did, it. I he, just went, he went turn three Zidane, and it killed me. Yeah, I just wasn't naming Zidane because I wanted to keep it lower on the radar. I mean, it's already high on the radar, but you know. Yeah, it's already up there. <laughs> That's why to, I said just it. Just <laughs> one to help, one to help you with your uh, your LQ. <laughs> And those were your, those were probably your Q, your qualifier. Those were probably five of the main cards I was most concerned with. Uh, which, like Thought Maturge, I could deal with. Sure, uh, I agree with that. The you, also, you have you have a bad, you have a catch up mechanic, and that you have access to clear their two drops, and you have mm -hmm. ex burst like a Dia and Odin. Um, yeah. You have so you have ways to catch up. I agree with that. Yeah. And then against Paul, uh, we play Black Mage, Alcid. Oh There's yeah, Paul's Paul's, Paul's easy. Paul's, for Paul's not an issue. Uh, Alua was not an issue at all. Like I know Irving, he played a couple of Aluas against me, and I just would give it haste and then just kill it. Sure, right. Yeah, red mage is great. <laughs> I would give it haste. Yeah. To my red mage. Yeah, all the red majors are good against Alua. And then, um, Dataluma Zidane. I Zidane I wasn't as concerned about. Uh, it sucked that you can't outsid him. It's kind of like the Ishtola thing. You can't outsid those guys. Um, but well, I mean. You can't yeah, can can just, <laughs> just doesn't work out that good well, usually. Yeah. Um but uh those were the main two that I was concerned with, but I think playing the three four drop Odin definitely made me more comfortable against those and then playing two Exodus, obviously. All right. As long as they as long as all they right. don't have I didn't, like, I didn't mean to dog on lightning, all you lightning players. <laughs> I love you. I love you, Dad. Andy Kimono, hi. I love you. <laughs> um I just think that uh you're better than that. <laughs> I think you're I think, better than that. I think didn't the guy that got top four, I think he played Hildebrand. Maybe we should just we should all just go back to Hildebrand. <laughs> yeah, no, uh um, Manderville. Man, I probably sound like I really am like a hater on uh Lightning. I'm I'm not. I just think that like the good players can pilot themselves out of better situations if they were playing a different deck. But anyway, yeah, that's... that's not what we're here to talk about, Cody. <laughs> talk about yeah, Genicon. But... There there were concerns that you had. Oh yeah, three. So there's, I think, three concerns that we had with Gen Con. Uh, one was slow play. Uh, that's obviously been blown up and talked about many times. Okay. Did you podcast, witness it yourself? The Facebook group. Since Did you witness it yourself? What 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 happened? Yeah. What were the conclusions? What would you like to yeah, see I moving forward? I won't say any names or anything like that. Uh, but I did see it quite so a few times. So names is plural. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Name, names is staff and players included. Okay. Not like, not like the staff was slow playing. I'm just saying, like. Okay. Yeah, because the, the staff have more important things to do than play. Right. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I think like that, watch for slow play. I think Square knows that that needs to be addressed, and I think they're taking sure. the right steps in the right. right direction. And I think that's an important uh, thing for people to do is 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 bring this up to RB, bring it up to Hobby Japan while you're in their presence, bring it up to any, bring it up to the North American page. Um, when I say bring up to RB, please don't private message him. I mean, like, if you see him at an event, talk to him and say, hey, I have these concerns. You don't need to private message private. him. But if you want to get a hold of him, contact the North American page. Yes. Have this conversation. Hey, I think Slow Plays is a serious concern. Um, talk about it in your podcast. Talk about it in your articles. Whatever whatever your concerns are, that's 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 what you should do. Um, yeah, so you Most saw several though, people. Do it constructively and don't just go off the rail and be like, oh, I hate Slow Plays. these these noobs need to learn to play faster, blah, blah, blah. And you guys got to do something about it. Like have an argument, have something like you want yes. like an objective. And, and mind you, I hate the, I hate the, I hate the, the stigma that is, or the, I don't know. The, I hate that if, if you see someone taking like a full minute for a turn, it doesn't mean they're slow playing. You need to take into consideration the amount of time they spent on their other turns too. Right. Right. Like I've, I've said it a million times, if, if you are playing at a reasonable rate, um, a good example is when I, I played against Curtis once, uh, and 
you know, um, one of his turns took like three minutes or something. And I was not even the least bit upset because he was very on top of it. All of his, very quick. He played his curse is a quick player. He plays very well. Um, so that wasn't a concern. However, I've played against some other people who, you know, took two minutes extra to shuffle and then their their mulligan decision took like 45 seconds and then they open their their next hand and they're going first so like just draw six cards you know like <laughs> let's go they draw five and they stare at it you, you, those things i think are concerns for sure uh, uh yeah. but that was really the only major issue um uh, and then two two minor issues not all the deck lists were collected <laughs> that's a major issue uh, in my opinion that's well, okay, okay. pretty pretty big. now i will say this i guess we, we I guess talked about one... this before but I think that that falls on Cody as well. Cody's an experienced enough player. I know he didn't see it until later, but he's an experienced enough player to know that, hey, this deck list should have been collected. Uh, players, you are responsible for turning in your deck list too, right? Well, I was I was surprised that when I filled out my like entry form and like got my box, they didn't take it then. I offered to hand it. And you never like, take we'll it, it later. Never takes it then. Um, I've been to... Well, that's how it was at Kansas. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, they took it in the beginning of Kansas when we got our oh, swag. Oh, yeah. they did. You're right. You're right. So yeah. typically in TCGs, my experience in Final Fantasy and Magic um, has usually been you sit down uh, at, before round one. They have like a player meeting. They talk about the tournament. They tell you how many rounds it is. So there's no surprises. They tell you <laughs> all this information. And then you turn your deck list and then they post the pairings. Yep. Um, if, if Square doesn't want to do it that way or if uh, wh whatever way they want to do it is fine. You play, but collecting deck lists obviously is important. Um, no. There's, I, in my opinion, there should have been obviously a judge that collected your your deck list. There might have been some sort of miscommunication, but either way, they they had to have announced something like, "Hey, we judges are going to come pick up your deck list." At that point, don't fold it up, Cody, and put it in your pocket. No, no, it was it was sticking to my mind the entire time. I'm like, oh, okay, well, know. but you see uh, what I'm saying. Uh, Every maybe, player is maybe, also maybe responsible. Knew. Maybe they're like, he's not going to top 16. We don't need it. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it wasn't just you, See, right? That's the concern, too, is if no, I know, you... No, I know like, at least my table and the few people around me, for sure. Like, if you don't notice, and then you... It, completely innocent. You just didn't notice it was still in your binder or something, or you swept it up with your things, it got placed in between binders, whatever the case may be. You make top cut, and they say, well, let's go deck check or something. They're like, oh, we don't have your deck list, and you hand it to them. That's a real feels-bad moment. Like, yeah, because yeah, you yeah, should you should get a game loss. But, in my right. in my opinion, you'll get a game loss. Even if the judge did not collect your, even if, even if the judge did not collect your um, list, I think that you should get a game loss. Um, right. Because I do think it's the player's responsibility. That being said, I agree yeah. with you, Cody, that it was an issue. I think it's definitely a staffing. Uh, it's not issue. though, because so 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 everyone hands in their deck list, right? Think no. of how many times someone no, they, shows up the late. Walk, the judges walked individually. And sure, sure. Them. Right, right, right. The judges usually... So here's, here's what happens sometimes. The judge walks by and he takes deck list, deck list, right, from each person. That's the, that's the best way to do it because it's the hardest way to mess up, right? Um, so you you go from table one, you collect this per left guy, and then table one over here. Then table two, right? And you go all the way down. Uh, it's hard. It's really hard to miss someone. But sometimes people aren't in their seat. They've asked the judge to go to the bathroom. Or some kind of things it could be missed right um there's the other way where a lot of times at at smaller events smaller being like 35 40 people you put your your deck list face down and you pass it up to the front i've seen that happen numerous times i've never had an issue but you theoretically someone drops your deck list on the ground you, we now have a big issue right right so i really don't like that list that being said if they put it on both if the judge is supposed to come over and pick up your deck list um and for some reason they haven't picked up your deck list as the player you should go turn your deck list in and say hey that judge sucks he didn't get, <laughs> he didn't get any of our decks you, you see what i'm saying yeah i i, I, I would I, as a head judge be upset with my judge for sure and then the player would get a game loss because i don't know well you know what actually i take that back if it turned out to be in your situation like a whole table I would not assign the game loss. I would say I would... you have a responsibility to turn in your, your deck list. Do not let this happen again. Um, but I would also probably not 
that that judge would be in a little bit more trouble. That being said, you know, if it was just a couple people that didn't turn in their deck list, I would do a game loss. But uh, yeah, I think uh, that's why I think you should just turn in your deck list at the very beginning, like when you get your packs and you get your bag, because also like they're handing out our packs and our boxes and our bags like mid match. Oh, which so I'd rather just trade, trade, trade in. That's like very very minor. Uh, but like trade in. No, it's it's like, it, it is major, right? Because you're if you're mid match, you're trying to concentrate. Time is going. You mm-hmm. don't have time to like take away and put this stuff away. I, I actually disagree. I think that it's a major issue that needs to be. Especially if slow play is currently a concern. Maybe they weren't aware of it. So like to yep. them, it's not a big deal. And, but and it, it adds when I on. say it's a major issue, I'm only saying like let's not downplay it. That needs to be addressed and moved yeah. forward. Right. I think I think Kansas Crystal Cup was like the ideal setup. Like here's Absolutely. your deck. Here's my money. If you, if you hadn't paid yet, <laughs> they're it. like here's your tote bag. Here's your packs. Here's your box. Have fun. Yeah, it, and it worked great, right? We, it's I don't like entry to a fair or something like where they you yeah. give them your money they put a wristband on but instead they're taking the wristband from you like your deck list right. and you're then, not letting uh, without it but yeah and then the only other issue we had was with repairings uh yeah but that was and that's gonna happen it's a newer game there yeah. Yeah. These people, uh yeah i don't know how there's i don't know who was scoring that, 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 that wasn't, was yeah that wasn't too terrible um uh, but that's I mean, inconvenience. I don't want to take away from Gen Con. Like the event was ran very well for the most part. Uh, obviously, we all had a blast. I think Square sold out of almost every item they had in the shop, and we've had ten new players at my locals over the past two weeks. So that's awesome. Yeah. Just in the future, we hope everything is streamed. That's. The... <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so you were there, so that's not your major issue. Zach and I, our major issue is that it was not streamed. Yeah. Um, you know it's. It's 100% like, in my opinion, not acceptable that it was not streamed. I think the company and the, uh, just the company is big enough and have it has enough. Square? Yeah, Square has, sure. is big enough to be able to take the time and have the funds and whatever setup to get a camera. You don't need to, you don't need to film all four top eight so, tables or so whatever. So you're saying instead like, of in, instead of like relying on the break zones cameras is that what you're saying? Right. Like they should have their own staffing moving around. Like that, that's not to say Keep the break mind, zones can't is, commentate. Right, right. But... This is what so it, it, it yeah, because right now I'm sure Breakstone has to have insurance on their gear and all that because they want to cover their stuff, um, mm-hmm. which is really important. Uh when you're traveling with high end gear, I think it would be and I'm hoping that that insurance and stuff is covered. Um but yeah I, I think that you gotta keep in mind that this is Square Enix's first time in the TCG, besides right. I guess chapters. Yeah. But like, this is bigger than chapters, right? If if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, probably just by you know globally, reach. it's certainly well, right. Yeah. <laughs> certainly is bigger than chapters, and so this is kind of a new. Like I don't even know if they were honestly expecting it to do this well. So having a live coverage team two years in isn't something you necessarily have to expect because the you know, and a lot of people hate the comparison to Magic, but it took a long time for them to really get on board with the oh, there. That being said, they could have just looked at Magic and said, hey, look, here's what they're doing. We need to do it better. That's what I was going to say. It's like, the, yeah, sure, the argument You're standing on like, the oh, shoulders the, of giants. Yeah, the older game, sure, they had a different beginning, but, like, it's it's 2018. Like, the technology's there. There's a precedent set from other games. Like, you can see how they set it up. And, and I'm not even talking about teams necessarily. I just mean the physical equipment. You can hire yeah. whoever you want. Like the way they're doing the hiring, that's great. You know, you get community people in, you get different voices. It's just like having an actual setup, like just one one camera, webcam, whatever comes up right. here, and just a little. And now Square Enix like isn't gonna let just anyone jump on camera. They're gonna have oh, to be absolutely. vetted. Um, you know, they have to agree, they have to sign something because you know, there's things you just can't say, things they don't want you to say. Um, I get all that. Um, yeah, but that being said, there are some things I would like to see improvement of coverage. Uh, construction rounds need to be streamed, right? Um, yep. These really long breaks between these, if a match lasts five minutes, you can't go on break for 45 minutes. Like, there's just too much uh, potential you're missing for viewers to see the game. Mm-hmm. At least play some replays like uh, SSG does. That'd uh, be cool, yeah. Yeah, so either replays or... Or show Toby's match from the from the worlds, you know, like show something cool, <laughs> show some fun. really exciting moments, you know, kind of like Star City does, right? Um, 
I would, you know, if you're going to put up interviews of, of winners after the tournament, then I, it shows that like, uh, Square doesn't have a problem putting, they'll have, they'll have, you know, an issue with random commentators, obviously, but, but you can put people on camera, put on someone yeah. who, who, you know, is just learning the game, put on someone who's doing well. They don't have to talk about their deck to talk about what they played against and how things went. Talk about how excited they are to be at Gen Con. Talk about how excited they are to be in Kansas. You know, I think like the the time in between rounds needs to be filled. Um, mm -hmm. And that's no, and again, this is not any sort of like, I'm not trying to slam anyone. I'm just trying to give constructive feedback on based off what I think. I think that if, you know, moving, moving forward or moving into next year, that we need to keep this kind of stuff in mind um, for streamed events. I think that we don't need tons of breaks um even if, right. if, if you're uh, streaming and i get it if you have a voice and you need a you need a moment then like have what you have two streamers right you have two commentators uh you know like have one come off the camera while one continues to engage with the chat or engages with this or ask hey guys what are you excited about for <clears throat> opus six hey what are you excited about opus seven have you seen the emperor you know <laughs> like what, what what's going on what's your guys's what's your what's your locals like talk to us about it and then when that guy's done talking the next match starts and then the guy can, you know, the, the next commentator. Does that make or, sense? Or, <laughs> I have an idea. Sure. Uh, have Gunslinger matches ready. Yeah. Like, so as soon as the table clears out, have one of the Hobby Japan or whoever's working the event come in, take a person who's not in the game. Maybe they dropped already. Maybe they're just there for the side events. Have them play a Gunslinger match on stream. Like, yeah. that's just entertaining. Like, it's not, you know, it's not super high stress. People can talk about the cool decks they're playing and kind of get the ideas flowing in the chat. And that way it's still gameplay, but you don't have to like move, you don't have to like uproot a game and have people move their like play mats over or something. Uh, but you yeah. still get content on stream. Yeah, I'd be down with that. I also like the like UK Nationals, they did like the kind of like the player interviews, like if a player won around like, with, yes. like 15 minutes. I've been left or begging for that. I've been begging <laughs> like, for like, that. Lucas would literally like run out and go grab them real quick, drag them in and be like, ask them a few questions about their experience. Yes, I mean, your deck is already on stream, there's no hiding. You know, like, yes, I love that. I want to see that. I think it, it's not just that I want to see it on a personal level. It's that I think it's important to the, the growth of the game. Yeah, like, I remember, like, I think they pulled in Jamie was one of the guys they pulled in for one. I remember, and he, he controversially said, I am the best Earth Wind player, and people were up in arms. <laughs> so... <laughs> but, uh, no, I think, I think all the things that we We are organic was, here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> we are organic. Wow. Are we talking about Earth? Uh, but yeah, so Gen Con in the past now. That's in the rear view. Uh, <laughs> now we're gonna hey, listen, to... you wanted to talk about it, man. No, yeah. said, I said, we don't I have want to talk about it too. Just This is our third time trying to record about Gen Con, and the gods keep striking down on us, being like, no podcast for you. Yeah, All right, had... so, so real but quick, me... as a disclaimer, before we move on, I just want to say, um, if you are... Uh, to the break zone guys, this is not anything negative towards you guys. I think you guys are awesome. You're doing a great job. Um, I ju we're just trying to give constructive feedback on the things that we could see improve. To uh, Square Enix, uh, you guys are doing awesome. We love your product. Uh, certainly to RB, this is certainly not an attack. We love RB. RB is the most awesome person on the planet. Um, but we, we there are things that we can improve, and we're going to just say those things because – we would like the community to chime in. We're not trying to rally the community and take up our pitchforks. We want to hear. Maybe we're wrong, um, but you know, we want to see these things improve. Um, if you're from Hobby Japan, do better. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I, you know, actually, I doubt anyone from Hobby Japan watches our podcast. That would be dope if they did. But if they did, and I could just have a direct line to them, what I would say is, <laughs> I think that. Square Enix North America knows what we want as players. I think that um, you have great staff working for you, and you should listen to the advice and move forward because that's what they're there for, right? They're there to represent us, um, and th that's that's all I gotta say. I think that we are giving great advice. If only we could channel it. Um, and we are channeling it to the right person. We're channeling it to, to the North American page as much as possible. Um, and so, yeah, th that would be my advice. Also, 
It'd be dope if you guys are watching. <laughs> I'm totally gonna <laughs> tag. I'm next. totally gonna tag Kaga man when we post this. <laughs> 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 no, really, we we love the game. We're super excited. Um, anyway, let's move on. Okay, so moving on. Uh, Zach, you went to a LQ in Georgia, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so before we get into that, how he how acts was the like drive? he didn't know the question was coming. Did you hear his <laughs> voice there? He knew the question was coming, and then he's just like, "Yes." Maybe maybe it's because of the ending. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, the, the uh, ending's a little little. But we'll start yeah. at the beginning. At the beginning, sure, uh, how sure, was sure. how was the drive up? Drive was long. Uh, it was seven and a half, eight hours. No one cares about the uh, drive. Yeah, right. Ta- talk about <laughs> you were five zero, beating Scions. <laughs> Wait, before just, we before we get into the record, <laughs> just a quick quick shout out to Lawrence. Uh, you're you already, awesome. You already like, gave him a shout out just because he didn't hear it. Didn't mean you didn't do it. Sure, but he doesn't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> without that, it wouldn't have been uh, nearly as possible. It would have been really stressful to try to that's find your, That's your third shout out, Lawrence. Yeah, right. Or second. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember. But anyway. Uh, but I super appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Lawrence, really is, Lawrence is awesome. Family. And a, a great pillar and, to the community for sure. Yeah, he's amazing. Like he buys two cases every set and like helps his community get all the cards they need yeah. and he just value trades so they get it. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah Lord, right, and Lauren has a great presence too on the US page too. Yes. Maybe the fans page <laughs> also. I, I can't remember which one, but fun fact, he actually helped develop Jordan Dank's ice deck. Like they're oh. really close, those two. All right. Well, my opinion of you went down. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> just kidding. Uh, so- so without any spoilers from Sam, Zach, how was the uh, how was Swiss there? <laughs> uh, so I went five zero. Uh, so there were a couple times where it looked a little bit, you know, not in my favor. But hey, uh, I gave you a sweet deck to play. Yes, you did. Uh, Timely Shantoto won my round one, and then I just sat there, removed his guys till he decked out. Round two was against a newer player who didn't know how to play Turbo Ice. Uh, then I taught him how after the game. He never lost another game all day. <laughs> I'd say it's because of me. Did I'm you just say saying. vomit? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, there were a couple rulings things that we had issues with too, where he just completely misplayed, not because it was a wrong play, but because he didn't understand how it was going to play out, like with responses and stuff, and he got blown out. Uh, so I felt kind of bad, and we went over it after uh, round three. Uh, played against Lightning Wind. It was on an Earth Wind deck. We talked about this earlier. It was. It wasn't easy. Uh, I did get lucky. Better to be lucky than be good. I drew all three Dotaluma in my first 15, 20 cards, and I just kept slamming them. Uh, yeah, kind of went game plan there. Uh, round four was against Scions. So this is the uh, guy who ended up taking me out in the semifinals where if I beat him, I was qualified because the other side of the bracket was uh, someone who had already qualified, already had the win because his opponent conceded because he didn't want to go to Nationals. So, yeah. Must be. So, Scions, I won in the Swiss because I double Hecaton shared his Alisaze, and he never found his third one. And then I also archered, like, his Alphanaut, I think, too, and I just got, he was on two backups for a while. And I won with one card left in my deck, and it was very close still. Uh, and then Swiss, I, or uh, semifinals, I lost in 15 minutes, 2-0, or 0-2. Yeah, and the last round was against Mono Lightning, no. again, just game plan. So how was the drive home? <laughs> Long and full of thought. <laughs> I uh, productive up a bunch of decks in my head. Uh, oh yeah, it was. I'd say it was productive. It's. I'm not gonna say I was like in a meditative state, but I was definitely dialed in. Like once I was on cruise control and no cards around me, I was just. I just had images in my head of decks and cards and interactions and. Yeah, we t- we talked a little bit and you're on your way home and you were doing some like math. <laughs> yeah, I was like I'm one card off. I'm like wait, yeah. I'm not one card off there. <laughs> Yeah. And then yeah. how many how many people were at that? No. That was I believe one it was too 19. many. Yeah, right. One too I, many. I believe it was nineteen. Uh it was either nineteen or twenty. We ended up at least one round had a buy. But we had multiple people drop after the second round. As soon as they're O two, they're just gone. I think like five people were out. Including my first round opponent, which was kind of rough for I don't like when my opponents drop. <laughs> yeah. So they did top four, right? Yes, it was cut to top okay, four. I asked before the event, and I said, how many rounds, and what are we cutting to? Like, Just so it was kind of in my head. Not that that's going to change me trying to win or not, but it's a nice to have that kind of mentality going into it, knowing where you're going. So we are constantly seeing this changed, right? Now, what are our thoughts on this? Because I've been pretty vocal about hating it. I, I think that it should always be top eight, not top four, and I think that top eight should be untimed. 
uh but always meaning i think that i think that it should be top top eight when there's more than uh 16 16 people okay. that being said and it should always be untimed uh top round cuts i get why people disagree that's fine you can have your disagreements it's okay to be wrong sometimes uh, <laughs> but uh, in all honesty i i do not like when you deviate from the rules though Yes. If the rule is that you need 24 people or more, it should be top four if it's less. No, you can Period. debate. If it's 23 it's... people, yeah, it's right. not up to you. It's up to the way the game is designed. I don't get to dole backups for any color because that's what I decide to do. Or you, like, you don't get to pitch extra cards and overpay for the heck of it. To because that's what I want to decide yeah. to do. You know, like, no, that that's just not how the game works. Similarly, I don't think that top eight should be untimed. I think that if you have an issue with it, you should talk to your representative, <laughs> you should talk to your community, and you should broadcast these issues like we have very vocally, and hopefully at some point, particularly the finals, needs to be untimed. But I think all of top eight. I think there's you... just too many decisions. Look, okay, if you're going to – and the math is pretty simple. If you're going to give me 30 minutes for a match, and sometimes matches go to time, then you can't give me 70 minutes – for three matches mm -hmm. it's just mathematically not there that being said i understand that not every match goes that long and i understand that you you guy you play all your matches in, in 20 minutes always great cool um great for you uh but you maybe you're not playing these wind water control decks or these dad luma riku mill decks that oftentimes go very late game and God forbid you play the mirror match. Oh man! <laughs> right, I mean, those... mill mirror matches are oof. right. Um, they're fun in my opinion, but they're not always the easiest because everything dies. Everything dies, um, and the games can go along. Similarly with the, the old water matchups, you know, like sometimes they used to call what they the gentleman's agreement. Nobody attacked. You know, <laughs> you, you have to build up a huge board until the first person cognizant and won the game. You know, um, I, I just think that, you know, some of these match, some of the, the decks are designed to go to time similar to how Hunter Nance is pretty vocal about not liking damage as a tiebreaker because it punishes play styles in certain decks. For example, for soya, I'm a big for soya advocate. It punishes for soya. You know, I, I just think that there are some things that don't make sense. I don't think I don't think that damage necessarily needs to be a tiebreaker, I, but I don't know if it matters enough times to to, to be concerned. Right. About. Yeah, like which tiebreaker is that? It's is it third? It's second or, or first. Second? It's third, maybe. Yeah. Because it's, it's like opponent, or like your like a win percentages of opponents and all that. First, I think it's strength of your it's strength of your matchup or strength of your opponent. I I forget. Anyway, it's it's probably not that big of an issue, especially in bigger mm -hmm. events. Um. But I don't know. I don't. I don't know if there's a better solution. I, I don't know. I, I need to look at the magic tiebreakers and see what they decided, you know, uh, to kind of get a comparison. Uh, but you know, I, I I also just I don't buy that venue timing is a reason for top eight not being timed because if you think just what is the I just, what is the mentality <laughs> what is the mentality behind that thought like we need to close the game so we need to close the the venue so therefore you can't have the uh, the amount of time you should have to play a match so we're going to we're going to change the outcome of the potential match because we just don't have enough time in the venue that is not even a legitimate like winner or loser like some you could you could argue that I did not win Kansas because I won in time like that that to me is frustrating right like like I don't know I think if Cody could have beat me that game or not I don't know he's he played too many dark cards and his hand was a whole bunch of dark cards <laughs> but there's scary dark cards and if he had a few more turns that would have been very bad for me Cody Aaron. you mean uh, Aaron. Uh, Aaron Aaron sorry I don't know why I said because I'm staring at Cody I, I want to play 50 light blue cards thank you very much <laughs> so, anyway <laughs> look I like venue timing is not a reason for a game to not be finished does that make sense it's not a reason that should be but it's 
venues don't necessarily care about what the norm is for a I TCG get it. standard. Yeah, like, so so we need to it, not have an hour lunch break. It may literally be out of control. We, or, oh, we, or absolutely. Thir- I mean, or th- I no 30-minute lunch break. We don't, we don't need a lunch break. Our, our rounds need to go quicker. Our, our judges need to be more efficient at getting things done at a fast rate in the turnover time. We need to st- I've, I have not been to an event that started on time yet. Uh, we need to start on time. There's sure. all these things that you can fix because – when we say untimed, we're not looking at opening the venue for another couple of hours. Like it's just not realistic. We're talking about, you know, if, if on average you you have thirty minutes per game, and you play out like the top eight or maybe it's the top sixteen, maybe you add twenty minutes three four times. Like you may be looking at an hour long, an hour longer. That certainly would have been a problem at Boston. That would have been a problem at Kansas. You know, like yes, it would have been a problem at um, the Canada one. Right, because they were like very short on time, but there are other ways to fix that. I just and that's only if those matches went to that time. We're not not all of them will. Some matches will go by faster, right? I just don't think that I look. I do think I do think that uh, a venue's time frame is a legitimate concern, but not when you're talking about the outcome of there, a match. There could be you planning in the. Yeah. Like beforehand, like if you talk to the venue and they tell you, hey, we have a time concern. You say, all right, now it's our mission. Make sure this doesn't affect the players. Yes. That's the ultimate whatever. Like we're going to assume that the venue timing is out of the control of Square and of whoever's running these tournaments. Fair. So yeah, sure. from there. As, as a yeah. price point, I'm sure that like, let's say RB is running it. He has a certain price that he can spend on it. You know, right. He doesn't just like Square, Square Enix is a company that, that runs off of profit. They don't just throw money around. So he can't right. just be like, sorry, guys, I rented the, the whole hall for another hour. I yeah. get it. I get that part. Um, and I get that there are logistics that, that we don't understand. No. But, but you to tie a mass result in to say, like, the reason we have a time limit is because of venue space doesn't make sense because it messes with the integrity of the match. Right. I agree. Yeah. Now, this... Following all of that is going to sound absurd, but how would you feel? Because I know sometimes in Magic, they've structured top eight such that you get, you know, best of three, like normal, you go up to ten, and then finals, like grand finals, are best of five. Could you ever see that happening in this game, or nope. is it just not a game built for that, do you think? There's I don't no, think it there's is. There's no sideboard. But... Um, right. best, best of five That's a good point. Uh, is really a product of needing additional games post and pre-sideboard. <laughs> because okay. you have things like uh, Affinity shut down by Stony Silence. And so it at least getting two games of not having to worry about Stony Silence right. or like uh, Dredge Decks not worried about Relic. Actually, Pacific they normally don't sideboard to a third game, though. Rest of is... Now, though, that's the reason. Right. That's the reason that they've gone to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, because basically you at least have... Th- now you have three games that they might draw Stony Silence, so you could maybe win if they don't draw Stony Silence. You have yeah. two fair games. Fair. Fair, um, <laughs> if you're playing affinity it's not a fair deck no no no, no decks in modern or legs are fair but you get what i'm saying yeah. it stops it stops that feel bad mm-hmm. of yeah well yeah you know, that's I just one, curiosity yeah, I, that's yeah. the reason i don't i, I would love it yeah I, I would love if swiss was best of five that'd be dope uh um, <laughs> but yeah I, oh, obviously man. i don't think that's gonna happen and i wouldn't even advocate for it it is what it is the great the finals of worlds being best of five would be cool Right. The finals the final. of the worlds. We have time. I, that I no, can see. They have no. De- I have no doubt that we have time to do that. So. Right. No. I think that. I think that sounds all that I agree with. Um. But Zach, so with your LQ behind you, uh, what's what's next on your radar? What's the next move for Zach Burrell? Uh, I plan on this weekend. I'm going to be making a trip down to Miami. Uh, that may be either Saturday night into Sunday, or it might just be a very long Sunday. Uh, that remains to be seen. Uh. At least one person I know is interested in going. Sam, you said you might be able to go, depending on timing and all that. Nope, just so, money. <laughs> yeah, I plan on going. Uh, just, just money, man. At first, I wanted to kind of let Andy do his thing and try to get, but I'm, nah, I'm going to make him work for it. <laughs> and uh, then after that, so the following weekend should be Orlando. Uh, I'm not going to Seattle. I'm not going to New York. I'm not going anywhere else. I'm just going to stay in state, save my money, <laughs> and go to Orlando. Mainly because I am already signed up for the LCQ and I have my plane tickets for California. Alpha dog. So <laughs> I own, I have the tickets. I got my nonstop 
both way flights <laughs> and I'll be hey. flying in Thursday. Uh, still trying to figure out what I'm doing for rooming, but that's my last concern right now. Yo, if you, if you know someone who has room for Zach Burrell, <laughs> preferably more than just one day. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind hopping around, but yeah, like yeah. It'll leave my things. Um, yeah, I know like Okimoto is offering to help out Thursday, but he can't after that because he has a hotel and stuff with his yeah. wife and all that. So understandable. completely yeah. understandable. So yes. yeah, anybody who wants to house this yeah, dog that needs a shelter. <laughs> yeah. Definitely shoot us a message. Yeah. Yeah. Us Choker Bros are staying in separate stables out there in California. Yeah. So. Seriously though. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hey, we'll, we'll have, uh, we'll have tested plenty. Um, <clears throat> Well, at least I will have tested plenty. I don't know how much testing you gentlemen are doing. Um, but That's yeah, all I do, yeah. I feel like. But <laughs> <laughs> Untapped, I'm always shuffling cards or something, so. Me too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I am really excited. I'm super excited for Nationals. Um, are there any concerns about Nationals? Concerns? I know we're, running, we're actually running pretty late on time here, so let's we'll wrap this up we'll just real quick with concerns on nationals um uh just a slow play like i hope it's just enforced a little stronger especially sure. because it's nationals like yep. sure people who aren't like super serious are there because they want to qualify in a place that like maybe grinders didn't go to and like they're not used to it but if you're going to go and you're going to commit to that you need to make that next that step to the next level like oh yeah sorry i just got just oh what? Brain, sorry just, <laughs> brain just went... a revelation yeah anyway the, not important i'll tell you guys after oh okay um, Anyway, okay. Any, any other concerns? Uh, maybe, like, I'd like to maybe see Untimed. Do we know like, what the... Oh, me too, yeah. Um, and I'd also like to know... It's at, it's at Square Enix headquarters, right? No, no, it's at the Hilton in LAX. LAX. Oh, yeah, it's, it's at LAX. Same, place. same, same venue. Um, but, For some reason, uh, I was really hoping that, like... Because then you wouldn't have to worry about venue space or time. I would, I would also like to know um, what, like, day two is going to cut to. I believe it's top 32 because I know RB said that top 32 is going to get the Sephiroth box. And no record resets. Yeah, that's phenomenal. <laughs> oh, they, well. they've announced that there's no record resets? No, I'm saying that's what I want is no record oh, I, resets. I think people will be irate if there's record resets again. Absolutely yeah. irate. Like, you can't take the game seriously if there's record resets again. I think, you know, that was a mistake. They've, we've moved past that. It's okay to make mistakes. Fool me once, you know, type of deal. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't think that, I, I doubt that day two will be a reset and i doubt that the number that it'll be higher than a top 32 cut that just doesn't make any sense there's less there's gonna like, be around 100 have, people yeah there so. could be like 100 people you do a top 64 cut that's a joke right like so right. yeah i definitely yeah, I think, see I think that. 32 would be a good you'd, number. you'd have day two be longer than day one <laughs> i wonder if they could do like some kind of cut this would be weird but cut 24 and then like the top seeds don't have to play the first few matches and then they filter down and then they meet up. We've something. talked about I've this before. Brackets like I, that. I do like that. Like I do like that quite a bit. Um, Reward the Swiss a little more. Yes. But. Right. Yeah. yeah. I do. I, I do like that. I don't know if there's any other concerns. Yeah. Uh, there's no real concerns. There's, I mean, there's things I'm hopeful I wanna know, I wanna for. I want to know what the prizes are. Backpack. Yeah, right. No, I, I know. <laughs> I know that. I know that's just too expensive. It's never going to happen. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I just, I hope to see a cool, a cool new play mat. Obviously, I love the one from last year. Yeah, you know, and I hope it doesn't get spoiled. I really like, I, I you know, and I know they're gonna announce it. Awesome. I don't, I don't even want them to show it. I just want to show up and see it. Like that would right. be so cool. That would be yeah, so cool to not like last, an idea. Last that would year be way more massive. excited about it than than being like, oh, I'm gonna go get that and bring it back. No, like showing up and, and like there being one at each table. Oh man! You just spend your whole round one staring at it, like, "Oh, look at this detail." Oh, sorry, yeah. no, hold on. <laughs> Slow play. Yeah, right. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I think that would be awesome as well. Hey, so let's uh, let's try to remember uh, next week. Let's kind of talk about some some things about Nats. Um, let's let's try to get someone um, to give us some information on what we should be doing while we're in LA, places we don't want to miss. Um, how to call a judge if you feel like your opponent's playing slow. Um, how to overrule, or how how to get a, you know, to um, what do you? I, I can't. My mind is appeal. Like slipping. Appeal, 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 a calling, a ruling. Um, if you believe that you're wrong, I've I've had to appeal several tournament one hundred and one. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, I, right, and I think tournament one hundred and one um, is more than just playing the tournament. I think it includes what are you going to do while you're in LA. 
Are Where you going to shower before the event? These are all important <laughs> things to know. Uh, how are you and your other two Joker Bros going to meet up for testing if you're staying at three different places? You know, like, so, yeah. So we're definitely going to dedicate, maybe maybe not next week, maybe the week after. Um, I don't know, but, but sometime, at least by September, uh, like middle of September, you should see that from us. Other than that, if there's anything that you guys want from us, hit us up. Let us know. Uh, let us know in the comments. Easiest way is just to message us and be like, hey, dude, yeah. love the podcast. Can you guys bring this up? Because every time Or, hey, ever... dude, hate the podcast. This is what I want to bring up. <laughs> yes. I would, I, and we'll talk about it. Like, we're, we're organic. We keep it real, all right? <laughs> um, I've never let Zach live that down. Um, I don't even know if that was ever even recorded. It was not. It was. It was was after we were done recording. We were making comments about like how it went, and I, yeah. (laughs) I think it was Cody's first podcast. I think it was too. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. Um, Other than that, definitely a shout out again to Cars Beavis. I can't say enough. Not just about uh, what they do, uh, what what James really does for not just running the store, but what he does for the community is amazing. What he does for for Square on on the end of keeping um spoilers keeping like the u.s page spree what he does as a moderator for that group uh what he does as the company what he does as a friend uh to the choker bros as, as a sponsor of this podcast what he does as a sponsor to zach and i and playing he just goes above and beyond um if you can support his his his, his business i i promise you that um you're putting money d- almost directly back into the community that's what it feels like to me yeah. if you if, if you're purchasing from cars Vivalis, uh you're putting money back in the community um, and you know, the only thing is we're Octo Octopath was that Octopath right? Is that that game? Yeah, has put a little damper on his uh, <laughs> his articles. Made me a little sad. James, come on now, you've beat the game eight times or whatever it is. Okay, it's time to bring them back. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do love his articles. I don't know how he cranks out like five a week sometimes. It's right. insane. Yeah, it's insane. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, let's close it out. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's going to do it for us today, guys. Uh, once again, we are the Choker Bros. I'm Cody Snodgrass. I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Sam Snipe Prime. We'll see you next week.